students today we will discuss about non performing assets or otherwise known as prudential norms or irac norms irac irac norms income recognition and asset classification okay the assets what are the assets of the banks the loans are the assets of the bank when the loan generates some form of income it is known as a performing asset when there is a failure on the part of the borrower to repay the loan principal amount or interest it is known as non performing assets okay normally loans are classified into two for our purpose we will classify into two one is secured loans and another one is unsecured loans when it is backed by a collateral security it is called as secured loan when there is no backing up of mortgage property or collateral it is known as unsecured loans for example loans which are being extended by the credit card companies are known as unsecured loans when you are getting a loan for industrial purpose even for education purpose when it exceeds rupees 4 lakh it is a secured loan because when the education loan amount exceeds 4 lakh you have to submit a collateral security as a mortgage so it is a secured loan but there are other types of classification also farm sector loan and other uh, unless non farm sector loan somebody may classify it as agricultural loan and non agricultural loan but for the purpose of npa calculation we can classify into two as already i stated you that is secured loans or unsecured loans okay when there is no generation of interest the loan is classified as non performing loan or non performing asset when the loan is issued the borrower is given a schedule of repayment the due date is the date in which the borrower have to repay the loan normally we give 90 days grace period after the due date that is known as overdue period we will wait for this 90 days whether the borrower repays the principal along with interest if he is not repaying then from the 91st day onwards it will be designated as non performing loan or non performing asset but during the initial 90 days also we have the classification of special mention accounts because the banker should exercise much caution during this period during this period the banker have to regularly follow up the borrower because if there is a failure on the part of borrower to repay the principal amount along with the interest it will lead to npa so it may slip into npa category that is why from the due date first 30 days we call it as special mention account zero sma zero then from 31st day to 60th day we are mentioning it as sma one from 60th to 90th day it is known as sma two so when there is no repayment during this 90 days automatically from the 91st day it will be treated as non performing asset so with regard to npa classification we have three criteria one is it is objective based that means when there is no repayment so it shall be treated as npa it is based on record of recovery so recovery is the main criteria the subjective interpretation means there is no subjective interpretation the day when it is 91st day automatically it shall be treated into non performing asset there is no subjective interpretation so it simply the day 91st day is taken as objective criteria then another one is record of recovery recovery is the main criteria okay the another third point is if a borrower is a non performer in one loan whatever the loan obtained by him and he, even if he is repaying perfectly or correctly the entire loan portfolio of the borrower will be treated as a non performing asset only so it is a individual based so the poor recovery or non recovery of a one loan of a borrower may lead to classify him as a non performing asset category and all the loans will be classified as non performing loans so these are the basic three pillars three category which we have to keep in our mind for classifying the loan as a performing loan as or as a non performing loan so when there is no repayment from 91st day onwards the from the 91st day to another one year it is known as substandard asset 
somebody may tell from the date of overdue no that is not correct from the 91st day from the end of the sma 2 period to 1 year it is known as substantial asset category it is very simple classification your systems will do so beyond substantial category period we have doubtful assets period doubtful asset 1 doubtful asset 2 doubtful asset 3 these are the three sub category of doubtful assets so in doubtful assets from the completion of the ss substantial period first one year is doubtful asset 1 and from the end of the doubtful asset 1 another two years will be doubtful assets 2 another two years okay from the end of doubtful asset 2 the further period is known as doubtful assets 3 da3 that means the first one year from the date of npa is substantial asset first one year is substantial asset the second year of npa is doubtful asset 1 third and fourth year is doubtful assets 2 and fifth year onwards doubtful asset 3 starts okay these are the category sub category of doubtful assets there is one more asset known as last asset last asset stands for 100% loss of a uh, loss or erosion of the assets there is no periodicity for the loss assets the loan which was obtained even a month back may be declared as loss asset provided if the bank inspector either internal inspector or the inspecting authority either rbi or nabad if they inspect and if they conclude if they come to a conclusion that the entire assets has been eroded totally it will be treated as loss asset for example you have given a loan for a house a mortgage property all of these sudden due to expansion of a road project or some other scheme the building may be demolished is then automatically it will lead to loss asset recently in one bank they have given loan for a house ala then without knowing that the property area is declared for the construction of houses for the slum people by the government then one day the slum clearance board people they have demolished all the constructions in the particular area so this asset become loss asset the bank has incurred a heavy loss this is only one example which happened in chennai recently okay then we have to talk about the provisions for this bad loans or otherwise known as non performing assets the provision for example for the standard assets we have to provide 0.40% as provision for the standard assets also for substandard assets 15% for the secured loans and 25% for the unsecured category of loans for the doubtful assets one it is 25% of the secured loans for all category whether it is doubtful asset 1 2 3 for the unsecured portion or unsecured loans the provision is 100% only for the secured category or secured portion or secured loans there is a difference in provision for da1 da2 da3 for example in da1 the provision is 25% for secured for da2 it is 40% for the period of da3 for secured portion also it is 100% last asset 100% provision whether it is secured loan or unsecured loan that is not a prior issue for the last assets 100% provision shall be created that is more important so we should be very cautious while calculating or while assessing the borrower somebody told correctly the npa starts from the date of application itself yeah when you are getting in loan application that time itself you have to scrutiny everything otherwise it may lead to npa okay next there is a, two more concepts you should be you should be thorough one is gross npa and another is net npa 
gas NPA normally it is expressed in terms of percentage that is a relative concept total NPA divided by gross loans and advances will give you gross NPA percentage you have to sum total all the NPA amount and you have to divide it by sum of all gross loans and advances into multiplied by 100 you will get gross NPA percentage if you deduct provisions from gross NPA amount you will get net NPA similarly when you deduct NPA provisions from the gross advances you will get net advances net loans and advances this is called as net advances so when you divide net NPA divided by net advances multiplied by 100 you will get net NPA percentage so gross NPA in minus provisions is equal to net NPA so these two are the real indicators of the financial performance of the banks so the real loss to the bank is NP, net NPA that we should always keep in mind then there is one provision coverage ratio that is otherwise called as PCR total provisions divided by gross NPA when it is expressed in percentage it is called as gross provision ratio provision coverage ratio that is PCR for example net, pay, net NPA is 310 crores for a bank and uh, sorry total provisions 310 crores whereas gross in uh, for example to, uh, the provision coverage percentage is 54 percent means in the coming years the bank may provide less amount so that also shows that the bank has provided adequately for the NPA also okay what are the reasons for the NPA there are certain internal factors as well as external factors the major factor for NPA is the default by the customers so he may be a willful defaulter or willful borrower he may be having adequate sources of funds but he may not be willing to repay the loan then another factor is the credit worthiness of the borrower is not adequately appraised that may be one of the reason number third is the diversion of funds otherwise called as misutilization of loans the loan amount may might have been used for some other purposes so that is called as diversion the borrower might have obtained loans for one purpose for a construction of a house whereas he might have diverted the funds for the marriage of his son or daughter so this is yeah, diversion. This is known as diversion. Then finally, the factor which contributes for the NPA is the lack of recovery mechanism by the bank. Okay, now we will classify these factors into internal factors and external factors. What are the internal factors contributing for accumulation of NPA? One is defective lending process. Number two, inadequate appraisal system. Number three, delay in sanction of loans number four lack of post supervision of loan amount sanction when we give the loan we immediately forget everything then system remains us the due date at the time only we follow it we are not effectively supervising the end use of loan that is the point here then the excellent factors that is willful defaulters they may be having adequate sources and resources but his mind is not willing to repay the loan he may be expecting some form of waiver or some form of assistance or some form of one time settlement also then next is natural calamity either severe flooding or cyclone or severe drought that might be one of the reasons next is economic recession economic recession is a common factor which may be a systemic factor for the over recovery of loans Next is political interference and diversion of funds. This diversion of funds is one of the major factors contributing for the accumulation of NPA in our country. Okay. 
what are the impact of NPS? NPS directly affect the financial position of the banks. Whatever the profit earned by the bank, the provisions are created. Finally, the profit is affected. It will affect the image of the bank, number one. Number two, it may lead to further investment or further lending by the banks. Then, if the NPA percentage is more, especially in cooperative banks, then RBI will impose supervisory action framework for the banks. Finally, when there is INPA, it shows the failure of internal control system. It shows the poor management function. Uh, function. So, these are the common factors. Next is, what are the strategies to reduce NPA? Number one, quick identification of NPAs. We have to identify in the SME stage itself. An effective manager told that the NPA starts from the submission application itself. From the submission of application itself, we have to monitor and effectively supervise. That is the statement given by an experienced manager. Next is, we have to conduct literacy camps. Number three, restructuring of loans. Before becoming NPA, we may consider to go for restructuring of loans. Next, we may restrict unsecured loans. We can concentrate on secured loans. And immediate or timely sanction of loan is more important. Finally, we have to constitute a recovery mechanism. Recovery mechanism at the head office, recovery mechanism or recovery team at the regional or zonal level to assist the branch manager. And there are certain preventive measures also. We have to obtain the civil score. We have to actively circulate our defaulter. We have to get the list of defaulter information from other banks. Then Finally, exercising utmost caution in the initial stage itself. But when we see the performance of certain banks, we are having adequate potential in India. So the NPA percentage has reduced in our country when compared to March 31st of 20. The NPA has reduced it now to a significant extent. So it shows that government is also having a strong Banking for the banks and the government is encouraging the banks to go for certain action to prevent NPAs. So recently you may be seeing many of the advertisements of the Nationalized Banks Under Surface Act.